Yeah. Right today? My almost every day. Mm -hmm. And your shirt today. <laughs> Everybody good? All right, we'll open up for coach. All right, uh, thanks for being here uh, again. and. Just recapping Clemson, uh, you know, a great college football game. I thought it was a very high-level game and two very good teams, an incredible atmosphere. Thanks to our students for coming out. Thanks to all of our crowd. Um, you know, obviously, when you draw like that, it's not just alumni. It's even the local fans, and uh, their support means a lot to us as well. And it was a, a great back-and-forth game, and, and they made another play than us. It was one of those games I didn't think – you know, there wasn't this huge mistake uh, that lost us the game. Uh, they made a play, one more play than we did. But in terms of our, our players, their preparation, their effort, uh, they absolutely sold out for that game. And I think from the time we came in here uh, till the end of the game, we believed we were going to win that game. And, uh, and we didn't, and we're disappointed. And that's football, and, and that's life. Uh, so you, you got to move on to the, the next challenge, and the next challenge is a very daunting one. Uh, we got to come back and have that same great week of preparation. Uh, we play a, a really good Florida State team. They're 4-0 right now. Uh, coach Norvell is a, a really good football coach, and it's year three. Uh, I got to know him well when we played Memphis in the Birmingham Bowl in 18. Um, and what I think he's done is they've done as good a job as anybody of, of blending what he inherited uh, with the transfer portal. Um, you know, they're, they're playing with a different energy this year. They're playing with a different confidence, a different sense of purpose. Uh, the, the team that we're watching right now on tape doesn't look anything like the team that we saw last year. And, and they're playing at a high level. Uh, you know, offensively, you know, right now they're the number one offense in the ACC, over 500 yards a game. Uh, the quarterback, Travis, is playing at a really high level. Uh, they've got three different tailbacks that are all big-time players. Uh, they got a lot of skill. The six, seven guy they got from Arizona State, Johnny Wilson's having a heck of a year. They've kind of fixed their own line problems. If you look at their own line, you know, they've got two guys, and then they got three guys in the portal. So their, their right tackle is from South Carolina. Their right guard's from Charlotte. Their left guard is from Notre Dame. And then they had some other players that were there that were good players. And so it's kind of this, this splendid group. If you took their top, you know, 15 players, it's like half and half, like eight and seven or seven and eight of guys that started at Florida State and guys that are transfer. Uh, they've made 33 explosive plays. They're a fast starting team. They've scored 55 points in the first quarter. Uh, and so like a week ago, uh, that we didn't start fast, uh, we need to start fast. If not, these guys can jump out, and uh, you know you don't want to play these guys from behind. And they've only turned the ball over four times. Uh, schematically, they're very efficient. They put you in a lot of different dilemmas with their personnel. And again, Mike and his staff have always done a great job. Uh, on defense, uh, again, Adam Fuller uh, is their defensive coordinator. Adam worked on my staff at Richmond. And, and they're much improved there. Uh, as always, they have one of the best D lines in the conference, um, and, and they have good skill, and, and they're very improved. They're only giving up about 18, 19 points a game, 300 yards. And again, they've had some good players when they got there, and they got a really good safety from South Carolina, a good linebacker from UCF, a defensive end from Albany. Uh, their inside tackle transferred from Mississippi State two years ago. And then the rest of the guys are guys that were at Florida State that have all developed and gotten better. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, what is it, the same, out of the uh, frying pan into the fryer. So, you know, just you go from Clemson to Florida State, but that's life in the ACC. And, uh, and we have a good football team, and we've got to bounce back and get ready, and this will be, a, a, this will be another tough challenge, but our guys are excited for it. You talked about the team selling out last week for the Clemson game. How do you feel about the process of getting them to do that all over again for this game? Because it seems like if you don't get that type of buy-in, it's not going to be a good result Saturday. 
no, we had a good practice today. And as I told the team Sunday, um, you know, like you, you come in the week before and you win a game by one point and not everything's great and you lose a game in overtime and not everything's awful. I, I complimented them on their preparation, uh, their effort. You know, you play a double overtime game, it's really hard on tape to ever pick out a play that a guy didn't go 100%. Um, but that now is the standard. We sh they showed us what they can do and how they can prepare and how they can play. Now let's do it every week. That's the standard. You showed what you can do in your level of preparation. And I know it hurts to do all that and not win. But if you didn't do all that, we never would have had a shot. Okay, so th that's now the standard. And if you want to win high-level football games, and, you know, I'd love to tell you that uh, the ACC Atlantic this year suddenly got easier. I mean, I, there's going to be a bunch of games like that between teams in the Atlantic. And there's going to be a bunch of one-score games. There's going to be a bunch of one-play games. And our only chance to be successful in those is if you guys prepare the same way you prepared for Clemson and, and get ready and then go out there and execute. But we got to start fast. We, you know, we can't start out down 10 to nothing or 14 to nothing. And Florida State's a team, again, they've been a great first quarter team. You know, they, they've scored 55 points in the first quarter and they've jumped on people and they certainly jumped on BC a week ago. And like I said, they're, they're this, this is, this is a different Florida State team than I've seen on film in, in three or four years. There's been the discussions about the weather and any possible movement of this game. You know, Connor, it's, it's one of those deals that you, you certainly hope that the, the ACC office makes the right decision. So it's, uh, you know, and if they don't, we will. You know, we're, we're not going to travel down there and put in anybody at risk. So we're monitoring the weather. Um, you know, obviously this is in the league's hands and Florida State's hands, and we would hope that they make the right decision. Uh, but if, if we feel there's any danger to our, our players in going down there, we're not going to go. By right decision, do you have a determination in mind by that, or what? can you elaborate a little bit more on that? I'll be very cliche-ish in general. <laughs> you hope they make the right decision. And again, I'm not... You know, when these things happen, everybody's a weather expert. And, and <laughs> you know, it's, there, there's a major storm hitting Florida, and, and we'll see, uh, you know, what the conditions are, you know, and, and part of it is what are the conditions when we're supposed to fly down there. So um, I don't know that right now. It's Tuesday. I'm sure every day we'll get more information. We have to be prepared to play a football game. To me, it feels a lot like COVID. You know, that COVID, you had all those weeks that you didn't know if you were going to play or not. And if you ended up playing, the team that prepared and thought they were playing usually ended up winning the football game. So if, if we think we're not playing and don't prepare to play and then end up playing, that won't be good either. About the conditions when you fly down there, what are the travel arrangements and will there be any deviation from those? I mean, we, we charter down there uh, to Tallahassee. You know, but it's 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 not just the flight. It's you know the hotel. Does it have electricity? Are they going to be able to feed us? Is there, you know, there's just you can't go down there and not have food, right? So, again, if all those things are checked and we feel it's safe, you know, and the ACC uh, determines that it's safe and we feel that it's safe, then there'll be a game. For clarity's sake, then the decision is in the hands. It's really right now Florida State and the ACC. Okay. Okay. And then ultimately, we do have some say in this. You know, so I mean, at any point, Florida State could say no, we're not playing, or the ACC could say it, and then our say doesn't matter. But if if they say that they feel they can host the game and it's safe, and the ACC feels that way, uh, then it's in our hands whether we feel traveling is safe. What's the deadline for making that decision? I don't know. So I, I don't know. I'm, again, I I'm, uh, <laughs> had enough emails and texts on this subject that I'm worn out by it. I'm you know, really shocked that you guys are asking about it. I didn't think that would come up in the press conference. <laughs> so Will kind of told me I wouldn't say this, I wouldn't say this. So I've been already slapped of the things I shouldn't say. So we'll, 
you know, we, we want to play. We absolutely want to play, but only if it's, it's safe and appropriate. The team after the game on Saturday was certainly broken up. You know, Michael Drugens in his post-game press conference was broken up. Sam was having trouble getting through it as well. How, how has their response been? I mean, I know you said practice was really good today, but from an emotional level. I mean, they were gutted. Our whole football team was gutted. Um, it was that was a, a hard loss, but you know we've had it's not the first time we've had a loss like that. Certainly, North Carolina a year ago, uh, Pitt a year ago. When you put so much into it, you care so much about it, you risk feeling like that. Um, but isn't that better than not invested and not caring? And so I told him afterwards. I, I mean, you guys feel awful. We feel awful. It's a terrible feeling, but all this means is that you care and that you invested and that it's important to you. And never live your life or, or do anything any other way, right? When you love your job and you care about it, whether you have a relationship, whatever it is, when you're invested and you care, you put yourself at risk. But, you know, I wouldn't want to live any other way. You know, I love it that I have a job that can make it that painful on a Saturday because I care that much about it. And that's a, a sleepless, awful night, tossing and turning, and you're going through the whole game 15 different ways, wondering if there's any little decision that you could have made that could have affected the outcome in a positive way for your football team. You know, I feel that way. I know all the coaches do, and I think all the players do. But, we, you know, that's what makes it great. That's why we're a family. We're in this together. Nobody came in here on... Sunday and said it was your fault, your fault, you should have done this. You know, we, we share the burden together. And, you know, I, I, we weren't happy. You know, there's no consolation prize of you finally played Clemson close. We believed from the start that we were going to win that football game. And I think we felt that way until the last pass was batted down. Coming out of the Liberty game, it seemed like the running backs had gotten out of the game plan in that game. And then you look at the film and I know the numbers might not have been there, but you know Justice Ellison picked up how many blitzes and Christian Turner picked up blitzes. How proud of you, how proud of them are you of their performance? We have good running backs. Yeah, and those guys stepped up. They really did. And you know, the last half of the fourth quarter and the last in the two overtimes, Clemson completely defended us different. And you know, we ran the ball better than we have against them, but they gave us a look daring us to run it, you know? So, um, you know, that's the way our offense works, right? If they're all bunched up and they're blitzing, the running back's got to step up and take on the blitzes. And I thought Justice Ellison and Christian Turner both did a great job of that. And, and then at the end of the game, when they started doubling all the receivers and playing a light box, I thought we had some really nice runs. Again, it'd be nice to have one more of them. Elder Robinson's uh, absence on the depth chart is that potentially ominous news? Yeah, he's, he'll be out for the year. So he has a, a season ending injury. Um, and again, last time I'm always going to look at the bright side, right? It's his fourth game and he's never red shirted, so that means I get an extra year with him. So he'll unfortunately miss the rest of the year, which is a shame. He was really coming on and playing good football and uh, was becoming a really valuable member of our, our linebacker crew and special teams. Um, but it, it was game four in the first half of the season, and um, you know we'll be able to, to redshirt him this year, and I get to spend three more years with him, so I'm excited about that. You touched on the, the running backs picking up, you know, the blitz coming in, but also, I mean, Sam was highly successful throwing the ball against the blitz. Uh, just any thoughts on that, his ability to pick up those up? I mean, Sam just plays with, with such guts and such courage and hangs in there till the very last second. And I thought our receivers played really well. And I mean, you know, Clemson does not let you nickel and dime them. I mean, they come after you and they dare you to make plays on the perimeter. And I thought our offensive line held up uh, better than we, we ever have against them. And we made plays on the outside and, and Sam, uh, played a courageous, gutty, high, it was a high-level football game. And I, you know, again, the year will play out, but I think that was two of the better teams in the country going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And, uh, you know, and again, the, the guys at Clemson played their hearts out too. 
I mean, that nobody was given an inch. And that was a back and forth, uh, again, a great football game. And we've, you know, for the most part of those one score games, we've been on the right side of them. And in this instance, we weren't. We, uh, you know, we came up, like I said, maybe one play or one touchdown short. Is your preparation this week at all, you know, we, we've talked about the weather, but just does that change anything with how you prepare that you might, this might become a bye week or, you know, travel might be different? Like I said earlier, like we have to have blinders on. You know, we have to approach the week like we're playing this game on Saturday on schedule. Right, because if we even allow ourselves for one second to think, ah, you know, let's cut 20 minutes from practice and we're probably not going to play anyways. Um, you know, we've learned the hard way during the pandemic in 2020. If you do that, you're going to get your butt beat. So we don't, con you know, we control a little bit of it. We don't control the weather. So if Florida State says it's safe to play and the ACC says it's safe to play and we feel it's safe to travel, then we got a football game in five days. And as soon as it's kicked off, nobody cares about any of that. All they care about is the result, right? We found out that about COVID, right? Just keep everybody safe, keep everybody healthy. We'll just have, you know, the second the game start, it's about the score. And so, you know, all those things, you know, we're monitoring it. We care about it, but if the decision's made to play the game, we got to be ready to kick off against a really good football team. Is the fact that this will be like the third week in a row where you faced a relatively mobile quarterback, does that kind of help in terms of preparation? No. No? No, I'd love to face an immobile guy. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice one of these weeks to just say, you know what, he's back there and, and he's a statue. <laughs> he can't make you miss. He can't run. You know, if you blitz him, just go get him. He'll, he won't. I mean, it's it's three weeks in a row that, and they're all different. You know, the one guy uh, at uh, Vanderbilt, you know, he can talk and run 80 yards for a touchdown. I mean, DJ, like your defensive linemen get to him and they can't bring him down because he's so, I mean, he's bigger than our D linemen. Um, and this guy, he can create and he keeps his eyes down the field and so many of their explosive plays or you don't get him down, and he keeps his eyes down the field, and, and he's like Sam. He'll jump up and make throws across his body, um, and he plays with a lot of courage. And, I mean, he can tuck it. I mean, they'll have some design runs for him, and if you don't protect the edge, he'll, he'll keep it on his own read, or they run what's, what's called a counter read play. Um, so he's, he's a really, really good player. And, yeah, when we played them last year, they weren't really settled at quarterback. They were kind of back and forth between the two guys. And it's this guy knows the offense. He's comfortable with it. And they do a great job. I mean, formationally, I mean, they test you. They probe you. And if you over-pursue, they've got to play action. Uh, they, they know what they're doing. It's really, really well-designed and well-coached. I know it's a week in the future still, but – it was a, the kickoff time for Army was announced earlier this week, and that game was already a sellout. Do you all happen to know if there's ever been three sellouts in a row at Wake Forest football? That'd be a question for yeah. Will. Looking that up. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that, I guess, kind of say about the fan support that you're starting to garner here? It's awesome. It really is. I mean, it's, you know, when we got here in December of 2013, you know, one of the biggest complaints from the players was like you know nobody comes to the games there's not student support there's not fan support and the response was well why don't we put a product on the field worth watching and if we do that and that doesn't happen then that's a valid complaint but until we take care of our business and you know manage the things we can control which is you know our attitude and how we uh act towards students in the classroom and how we behave in the community and then ultimately how we perform, let's try to do all those things right and then let's see what happens. And it's really great to see those things come to fruition. You know, going back to Duke and, uh, you know, NC State last year and then, you know, the VMI crowd to me was great for an opener and, and then Liberty was a sellout and, you know, this was a, a sellout and, I mean, it's, 
I can't imagine some of those other games down the line aren't going to be sold out too. So it's great, and we're uh, grateful for our students. We're grateful for all of our season ticket holders, our alums, but also the local fans who come out to support us. Again, with a school our size, it's, it can't just be students and alum. It has to be local fans, and I think I appreciate those people as much as anybody, you know, because we're we've become their team, and and that's a great feeling. Coach Kobe Turner said after the game that the offense and defense do a good job of feeding off each other and picking each other up. How does that mentality come into play, rebounding from a tough loss and then preparing for another tough matchup? Well, I mean, you'll, you'll hear the term complementary football, and that doesn't just mean they complement each other, right? It's, you know, getting a turnover and then taking that turnover and scoring on it or getting a three and out and having a good punt return and giving yourself a short field. Um, and I, th I think what it does is when you have a tough loss, you know, there isn't one side of the room pointing a finger at the other. You know, hey, offensively, you know, there's three or four things. If we had done, we'd have won the game defense. You know, you get a third down stop here. We get a stop in overtime. I mean, it wasn't one play. There was multiple examples on both sides of the football that if you make that play, we win the game. So, you know, we all share in success and failure. So the coaches, the players, the staff, uh, we're in it together. And I think our players believe that. We certainly feel that way as a staff. Uh, there's nobody pointing a finger. And when you're unified like that, you can recover from a tough loss. Thinking about, um, you know, second away game of the season, Vanderbilt, not as big of an environment going into, you know, Florida State where it's going to be likely a packed house. Just how does that affect your preparation noise-wise? You know, when it's the, the other team's fans that are Yeah, I mean, given that Florida State canceled classes and canceled their homecoming, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be packed. Um, I mean, it could end up being, who knows, there could be fewer people here than Vanderbilt. You know, I, I mean, I, I think we were preparing for that. I'd be very surprised. I mean, I have, you know, friends down there that wanted tickets that said, no, thanks, we're good now. So, um, you know, it, it, again, it's – when that place is rocking and they were sold out for BC and, you know, they get their, the horse and they throw the thing and it explodes. I mean, it's like, a, it's, it's quite a scene. It really is. Um, and, uh, and our players enjoy that environment. They really do. They, they like playing in big stadiums and having big crowds. Uh, whether we get that or not right now, who knows? I, I would be surprised, but maybe we will. You know, who knows, maybe this thing will take a turn and it'll head somewhere else and it'll be, you know, 80 and sunny the next four days. John Doe, you need anything on Zoom? No, no weather questions for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody else good? Good to see you, John. <laughs> Sorry, Coach. Don't yeah, we, we get all our questions answered at Mass on Sundays, so. <laughs> there you go. Everybody good? All right. Okay. See you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Yeah.